you ready? Hello? Can you say hello? Do you want to help me introduce this video? No? Okay, so today is the last, or this week we're cover. oh, okay. <laughs> our last making video for Halloween and then next week will be the fun reveal. So I made all of the like actual clothing pieces. I've done a chemise and stays, a skirt and something else. A belt. I made a belt. So the last things that I'm going to be making are a witch hat and a staff and the witch hat is fairly straightforward. I've made a witch hat on camera before. Uh, if you check out my Halloween video from last year, um, I made a witch hat for that. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Rather than doing the like straight up pointy style, I want it to have a little bend so I can hang a cute charm off of it. So I want it to be like that structurally instead of letting chance kind of take it where it'll just flop over wherever it is natural. But I want to add structure that is bent over. So that'll be new for me. Um, I think it should go fine. I have a plan and I'll talk about that later, but I, I think I have a plan. If it doesn't work out, then I will just make like a normal like up and down pointy witch hat. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try this. And then I'm also gonna make a staff and the staff is gonna just be like tying a jar and like some stuff to a stick mostly. So that's not too complex, but I wanna make the stick look cool and like kind of spooky. So we're gonna, try some stuff out. It's probably not safe to put a candle in a jar that I'm holding on a stick, right? So maybe we'll figure something out for that. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the general plan and let's go look at the pattern. All right, so like I mentioned earlier, I made a witch hat before. I made one last year for my other witch Halloween costume. Maybe I should make a witch every year. This is the brim from that. It fits my head well, so I'm just gonna continue using this. To get this pattern, basically you just wrap a tape measure around your head, measure how long that is. My head circumference is 22 inches, and then you plug it into a circle calculator and figure out what diameter you need or radius you need to make it a 22 inch circle. Heads are not actually completely circle shaped. Like which hats tend to look better when they are a circle. If you're making a different kind of hat, then maybe like, I don't know, don't, but because this is gonna be just like a triangle on top, then I'm, I don't know, I prefer to make it just an actual circle. So that's fine, my head is pretty circular anyways. I guess if yours isn't, then make adjustments according to that. Then you figure out how wide you want your brim to be and then go around the inner circle by that much and then you have a donut and that is your brim pattern. This is my cone part of my pattern from last year and it's a little bit short for what I want. So if you look at my rendering here, it goes up and then it kind of folds over, flops over like that. Yeah, it's not gonna look exactly like this rendering, but I'm gonna try to do something that kind of approximates it. This, however, is too short. I think this probably would only reach up to about what I've gotten there. So instead, I'm gonna expand this by about three inches, I think. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm just adding three inches to this part here so that it's a little bit taller. Oh, wait a second, that was wrong. I'm not just gonna add three inches all the way around because that would make this too long to fit into the brim. So I'm going to add three inches and then I'll measure what the line is and stop it at 22 inches. Then I'll just chop whatever of this side off that I need to. Okay, I've got my triangle piece cut off. I'm gonna tape it together and then I'm gonna chop it apart to see if I can make it like the kind of crooked type of hat. We'll see. Okay, so on the real thing, this will be less floppy because it'll have wire in it, but my phone here so I can see what I'm doing. I think that it looks okay, could be better. I think that I started the bend way too far up. Something closer to like here would be better. I would like to make it so this one bends less and this one bends more. Get in there. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna see if adding something around here-ish helps at all and then I will check back in. Okay, I think I finally got it worked out. So not only did I add another bend here, but I added two more like one inch bends at the top of this section. You can see there's a bunch of little cut marks. Um, this is so floppy and in my face. This is what I had designated like the front of the curve. So here there's like an inch gap half inch on either side of the center front for both of these two one inch strips. And then those at the, let's 
turn you around. At the back here where it's curving in, those are both sitting flush with this section, the very bottom section here. That adds two inches of height on the front and reduces to like nothing at the back. That's essentially what I did for these two larger sections as well. These are the sections that I started with originally. They're kept at like their full height of the cone at the very front and then they are inserted like into the brim, not the brim, into the previous section when they are on the back side and then I did the opposite for the very little tippy tip because I want to hang a little charm off of there and I just think it's cute when it makes like a swooshy rather than just like a U. That's what I've got. Hopefully this works out. Plan is to do this shape out of the buckram frame and then do the cone shape out of fabric and then the fabric will just get tucked into all of the places that get like gradually curved in I guess. I hope that makes sense. If not you'll be able to see me doing it later. But each of these sections is going to get its own wire on where it makes its own circle so everything stays really nice and rigid and like pushed out and then I'm gonna stitch everything together so that it like makes this nice shape. I hope it works out. I think it should be fine. <laughs> That's the general plan. I've got to now cut out the fabric and the buckram. The buckram I have is not super thick and needs to be reinforced so I'm gonna do a couple layers of buckram and I'm going to fuse them together with heat and bond. So I'm gonna do a few layers with heat and bond. I don't know why I'm selling or wearing this. <laughs> For the buckram I'm gonna do a few layers with heat and bond so that they get really nice and like fused together and act as like a thicker layer and that'll give everything a little bit more body. I think for the brim I'll do maybe three or four layers and then for each section I'll do two layers. If it's not sturdy enough then I'm gonna do three layers. That's why the three to four layers for the brim and then everything gets a wire and like then I have to use all those wire caps. Yeah it's gonna take a little while <laughs> and then everything will get covered in fabric. So I still need to pick out fabric actually and I need to pick out a lining as well. So Let's go look for some fabric. Okay, so I think I found some fabrics. I have all of my already made pieces here. There's the stays, the skirt, and the chemise is down there too. And I was trying to decide what might fit with this. So I'm going for like really natural fabrics. This is cotton or, or linen. I believe this is a wool and then this is silk. So I really don't want to do much polyesters or anything. So this is what I found. This is polyester but it's polyester velvet. So I was looking at that, decided that it's maybe a little bit too fancy for my style of witch that I'm making this time. I found some gray satin and I probably won't use this for the outside but it would make a good lining. That's an option. And then I found this which I thought was really cute and would be really fun to put over something. It's an eyelet fabric. But then I decided that I think I want to make a top out of this eventually. So, but eventually I found in my stash this flannel that I used as the flannel patch in my Yumeko jacket. I really did not like it as a suiting flannel. When you make suits, you stick a layer of flannel between the horsehair canvas and like the body so that you don't get all the pokey fibers. This is what I used, but it frays way too much for that. So it was really not a good choice for it, but it was the only thing I could find. However, it would make a pretty good witch hat and I think it really suits all of my fabrics really well. So I think I'm gonna be using this. I have this that I might use for the lining or this, I'm not sure which. So that's pretty much it. I think it's time to cut some fabric, woohoo. multiple sheets of buckram together. This has three layers and these each have two layers and you can see that it's definitely stiffer than it was when it was just the single layer of buckram and this is like extra stiff for being the brim of the hat.
cut from buckram and so now I've got to make all of the cone pieces like actually into cones so that means all of these pieces get wrapped around like this so that they resemble more of the pieces of the cones. When I'm doing that because these are two layers of buckram I've marked on the buckram where the seam allowance is so these two lines should match up. You want to make it so that it's still only two layers of thickness where it overlaps. You want to cut this off here and then the other side, the other layer of the buckram on the opposite side so that when you put it together there's only one layer where they overlap. This one is going to be taken in a half inch past the seam line and same with the back side of this. I wired all of my pieces so that's what this like pile of stuff is it's all my wired pieces the only one I didn't wire is the little tippy top part because it's such a small circle that it would have been a really big pain um, so it's gonna get stuck to this piece which has a wire on it so that wire should be sufficient in keeping this rounded enough so next is to stitch all these little pieces together I also went ahead and stitched the cone that makes the cone part of the witch hat. Like I'm gonna sew the cone together so it makes that bent cone and then I will cover the brim and then I'm gonna cover the cone and then everything gets stitched together. Let's go do that. <laughs>
For the final piece of this costume, I'm gonna be making a staff. It's really hard to get this whole thing in frame, sorry. I've got this big branch that is from my front yard. We were having a tree cut down because it was growing roots into our house, so not great. But I asked the tree removal people if they would save me a nice looking branch and this is what they did. So that's where I got this branch. So that was convenient. I don't super have a plan for this. I think that mostly I'm gonna wrap a lot of it in strips of leather, maybe hang some, I don't know, I don't really have feathers, maybe leaves or something. I'm not really sure. Maybe I won't hang anything off of it. That sounds like a pain, except this cute jar. I am definitely hanging this cute jar off of it. And then I also have this fake tea light. Let's see if it'll turn on. There it goes. It's like one of those fake flickering tea lights. I'm just gonna drop that in there. Wow, cute. And then string it up on the staff somehow. So that is the general plan, but it may or may not change. We'll see. Maybe I'll glue some leaves to it or something. Fake leaves, not real leaves. That's pretty much it. I was thinking of removing all of the bark and sanding it down so it was nice smooth wood underneath, but I also don't want to do that. That sounds like a lot of work. So I'm gonna cover it with leather instead and it's gonna be more rustic. for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think that everything turned out really well, um, even if it was a little bit on the simpler side. The hat I think generally went pretty well. It was my first time making a structured witch hat and I think maybe my sixth hat total. So I am definitely improving every single time I make a hat. We had a full year of millinery class. So I hope that <laughs> I'm beyond basics at this point, but you know, I'm always still learning. So the only big qualm that I have with the hat, where I said earlier that I liked having it as a circle because I think it looks better. It might look better when it's not being worn, but heads are oval shaped. So make your head size opening oval shaped. It'll make your life much easier. It still fits on my head like, and I can still wear it. So it's totally fine. It's just not as comfortable and it requires a little bit of balance if I wanna wear it like straight on my head like this. It likes to sit kind of more on the back of my head because I guess that's where my crown is roundest. Like this, my head is oval shaped. So <laughs> it doesn't quite sit the way I wanted, but I think it still looks good and like it looks nice in photos and video. So it's totally fine. I just need to do a little bit of adjusting when I am wearing it for photos. So like in some angles, like if I'm to the side, then I'll hold it or I'll let it sit back on my head a little bit more, which is actually preferred sometimes because then it keeps it from having a shadow on my face. But if I really want the like cone part of the hat to show, then I do need to like let it balance on the top of my head a little bit. So, you know, it's good in some ways and not good in other ways. I think in the future, if I wanna make a bed cone, then I'll make the brim a little bit smaller so that it is able to be seen even if it's tilted back. But I think for the straight up and down cone, that is a really good brim width. I used the same brim pattern as I did on my witch costume from last year, and that was a straight up and down cone. So that worked really well. And I think the proportions are really good for when the cone is taller. It's just that because the cone was bent in this hat, it kind of obscures it. I could have done some mulling 
where I stick some padding around the buckram frame because the wires kind of like created ridges, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal, so I just did it. I think also that was partially due to the fact that I made the wires a little bit wider than the buckram openings, which is not great. You want to kind of err on the side of smaller so that you don't have the wire showing through your outer fabric. That's not really a design choice that I'm going to consciously change next time. It's just a matter of technique and like something that is good practice. <laughs> so not really something that I'm like, oh, I want to change that next time. It's more, I should have better technique next time. <laughs> but now I know for next time and I will just keep improving every year. I'm thinking of doing a witch costume every year because I had a lot of fun making this and I love all the different interpretations of witches you can have. Like there's Harry Potter witches and then there's like Hocus Pocus witches and the Hex Girls and like just so many different interpretations. I would love to just keep making different variations. Um, if you haven't seen my video from last year, my video quality has definitely improved. So if you don't want to watch the one from last year, I totally understand it's not as good. <laughs> but I made kind of a 50s inspired witch that was based off of the Halloween Hot Barbie. So that was more of a like bewitched style of wish. I just I find witch costumes super fun to make, so I think I will make this uh, kind of yearly tradition. Let me know if you like that idea. If not, I might do it anyways. <laughs> Just let me know what you think. For the staff, it was really simple. I didn't do much. I had originally wanted to do more of a complex design, but then I decided I had that really cool hanging light feature and I really wanted to make that the focal point of the staff, so I kept everything else really simple. Just wrapped some leather around so that I don't have to touch like gross wood. I mean, it's not like gross. It's clean. We hosed it down and like let it dry out and everything, but it's still like, it's got the crumbly texture of bark. So every time I touch it, it does leave a little bark on my hand. So that's why I put the leather on there. And then also I glued some leaves onto it because this one is supposed to be kind of like a plant witch. I think this went pretty smoothly. I know. Oh, you don't want to be held. Can you just say bye really quick? Thank you guys for watching again. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up for Baby Bet. Please leave a comment if you are interested in seeing more witches next year. If you aren't, also leave a comment. Um, I don't know, just talk to me if you are interested in millinery and you want advice or if you want to give me advice, that's cool too. <laughs> and if you want to see the reveal next week and other things in the future, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. That's all I got for today. Okay. <laughs> all right, I will see you guys in the next video and, you know, have a good Halloween. Woo. Okay, bye.